This episode was decided by listeners who responded to a poll I put up last week on Twitter, asking if I should do a regular show for episode 30, or if I should do a special episode with 30 random facts. If you're not already, follow the Story Behind Pod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram so you can contribute to the show too. What you decided was episode 30 should be 30 random facts. So without further ado, here we go. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind 30 random things. But first, a quick message. Do you have any superstitions you believe in? Come on, it doesn't have to be as obvious as not walking under a ladder or not stepping on a crack. It could be as harmless as growing a playoff beard or being a little more cautious on Friday the 13th. I'll be working on an upcoming series for March, and I'd love to hear your stories. Record a clip letting me know your superstitions, and if you're a podcaster, be sure to include the name of your show. You can email them to the story behind pod at gmail.com. And also forward this podcast to 10 of your friends, or bad luck will befall you. Just kidding. Or am I? Many things we eat and drink contain grass. Not the kind that necessarily grows in our yards, but varieties like wheatgrass and barleygrass are found in beer, whiskey, and bread. A way to distinguish a monkey from an ape is their tails. Apes don't have tails, but monkeys do. Yams, commonly found in your grocery store, are probably sweet potatoes. True yams grow in Africa and Asia and are relatively tough to find. They're related to the lily family, while sweet potatoes are related to the morning glory family. But grocery stores distinguish sweet potatoes as being a firm sweet potato with a light flesh, and a yam as being a soft sweet potato with a more orange or copper color. The moons and natural satellites of Uranus were named for characters and works by William Shakespeare and Alexander Pope, like Ophelia, Juliet, Belinda, and Umbriel. Hades, from Greek mythology, is not the basis for Satan in Christianity. Hades isn't necessarily a bad guy. His job is simply to guard the underworld, which is where all the souls were believed to have gone when they died. There were parts of the underworld where evil souls were tortured, much like Christianity's description of hell, but souls considered good are rewarded in the underworld. Erasers work by attracting the graphite from the pencils off the paper and onto the rubber. Before our modern-day erasers, people would often use balled-up bread to fix their mistakes on paper. Raisins were discovered accidentally when a San Francisco grocer began selling grapes that had been dried out due to the heat wave of 1873. He called them a Peruvian delicacy. Eclair is the French word for lightning. It's unclear why the cream-filled pastry is named that, One theory is that the name refers to the flaky outside and creamy inside being light, and a second theory is that it's eaten in a flash. Shirley Temple fought soda companies twice for trying to market the ginger ale and grenadine drink named in her honor. Both times, she won. In 1988, when a California company tried to market Shirley T. Sparkling Soda, she was quoted by the New York Times as saying, I will fight it like a tigress. All a celebrity has is their name. If you've ever wondered where the phrase steal one's thunder comes from, it's from John Dennis, who invented a device for one of his plays that made a thunder sound. When his play flopped, the theater used the device for another play, causing Dennis to say, That is my thunder. The villains will play my thunder, but not my play. Steal My Sunshine, the poppy 90s favorite by the brother-sister band Len, isn't actually as positive as the title implies. It's been said the lyrics either refer to drugs or depression and how someone can make you feel worse by stealing your sunshine. The word sycophant, which basically means a self-serving suck-up, has two possible origins. The first is that it comes from the Greek word suko, which means fig, and phantis, which means people who reveal something. Back then, those who exported figs were doing so illegally, and anyone who told on them to the authorities was called a fig revealer, or sucophant. But the Oxford English Dictionary acknowledges this origin story may be unsubstantiated. A second origin comes from the Greek sycophantes, 
the Latin sycophanta, and the Middle French version sycophante in the 1530s, which also has to do with figs. In ancient Greece, it was a vulgar gesture to stick one's thumb between two fingers, which was thought to resemble a fig. It doesn't sound too bad until you find out that a fig was symbolic of a certain lady part. This gesture was commonly used as a taunt in Greek sporting events. Antarctica is the world's largest desert. Hard to believe, right? But a desert is actually defined not by sand or heat, but by the amount of precipitation it receives. Antarctica only gets an average of two inches of snow per year. New words are added to the English language at a rate of one new word every two hours. Coca-Cola bottles were designed when the company sponsored a competition to design distinctive bottles. At the time, all beverages were put in similar bottles, making it difficult to distinguish one drink from another when kept cool in a bucket of ice water. The designer of the bottles originally wanted to draw inspiration from the coca leaf or the cola nut, but the local library didn't have pictures of either. He came up with the now iconic design of the Coca-Cola bottle after finding a picture of a cacao pod. Enormity is often thought to mean enormous, but it actually means extreme evil. It can be used, however, to mean a gigantic amount of evil. Remember the movie in which Sinbad played a genie called Shazam? Or reading the childhood books, The Berenstein Bears? Or even Curious George's Tale? Those things never actually happened, at least according to what people are calling the Mandela Effect a phenomenon where many swear they remember something one way, but it's actually different. By the way, there is no record of the movie Shazam. The books we read as kids were actually the Berenstain Bears, and Curious George does not have a tail, which suggests he's an ape rather than a little monkey, as he's called in books. Eyes that are two different colors on a person is called heterochromia. Some people mistakenly think David Bowie had this, but one of his pupils was permanently dilated when a friend's fingernail sliced his eye open when they got into a fight as teenagers. Mozart was so good at playing music at a young age, when he performed in London, people suspected him of being a dwarf posing as a nine-year-old child. Austrian actress Hedy Lamarr wanted to help the war effort during World War II, and with the help of composer George Antheil, developed wireless communications technology we still use in everyday objects, such as cell phones. In The Big Lebowski, the word dude is used 161 times, and man is used 147. No one really knows why sometimes we get the sensation of falling when we're about to fall asleep. It's called a hypnic jerk. And one theory is it's a leftover response from when humans used to sleep on branches or on cliffs. V for Victory was popularized by Winston Churchill during World War II, but it was first proposed as a symbol for resistance to tyranny by Victor de Lavalier, who was exiled to England after the Nazi invasion of Belgium in 1940. In case you ever wanted to kiss a baby iguana on the mouth, you might want to be aware that they often eat the poop of adult iguanas to get bacteria necessary for digesting their food. George Orwell's 1984, written in 1949, shot to the top of Amazon bestsellers last week, which, for those of you listening in the future, was the second to last week of January 2017. This was following a number of references to the book on Twitter after Trump's counselor Kellyanne Conway's statement that White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer used alternative facts when describing Inauguration Day. If you see a representation of a pirate wearing an eye patch, it's most likely not because he lost an eye. A theory which was deemed plausible by Mythbusters is that wearing an eye patch kept the eye's pupil dilated, so seeing in the dark was easier when the patch was removed. Having the skill was handy when pirates had to go below deck quickly. Lincoln's famous beard was grown because 11-year-old Grace Bedell of Westfield, New York, wrote him a letter suggesting growing a beard to hide his gaunt face before the upcoming presidential election. On the way to his inauguration, he made a special stop in Westfield to visit Bettel and, shaking her hand, said, You see? I let these whiskers grow for you! As much as fans love him, 
Darth Vader only appears on screen for a total of 12 minutes in the original Star Wars. Not that I recommend you try it, but Romans used to effectively whiten their teeth with urine. There are two theories most probable about the origin of pink lemonade. Neither of them involve adding strawberry or raspberry to the mixture, as is common today, but both involve the circus. One is that red cinnamon candies were accidentally dropped into a vat of lemonade in 1912, and because there wasn't enough time to make a new batch, the lemonade was sold and became a hit. The second is that a lemonade salesman at the circus in 1857 ran out of water to make lemonade and grabbed a tub of water that was previously used to wash a performer's pink tights. The role of Shirley Temple was played by Laura McClellan from the Productive Woman podcast. John Dennis was played by Danny from the Idiom Savant podcast. And Stargate Pioneer from Better Podcasting played Abraham Lincoln. Information and links to all these facts can be found in the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. Starting Thursday, The Story Behind will be starting a month-long series called Forrest Gump February. Each episode will be the story behind a different pop culture or historical reference from the 1994 Tom Hanks movie. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you won't miss an episode. Thanks for listening.